We are now in a position to start studying schemes more closely now that we know what a scheme is, and in particular an affine scheme. So the next step is to study morphisms between schemes. This is important both to embed schemes in a categorical framework and also to understand how to map things between different schemes. As usual, we will try to mimic what we know for varieties. But again, in the world of varieties, we have some luxuries that we don't have anymore. One of these luxuries is that when we work with varieties, a morphism of varieties as topological spaces uh, defined a pullback automatically. So what this meant is that from O, Y of V, you got a map to O, Y of F inverse of V simply by here, an element here is a regular function from V to K. And so you compose it with F from the pre-image of V and then you, the composition gives you a regular function on U. And so this composition, the pre-composition with F gives you this pullback. Also, the pre-image of the maximal ideal of a point here inside, say, the stalk at P automatically was the maximal ideal of the point F of P here. These things we do not have automatically anymore when we work with schemes. So we need to include them in our definition in a natural but artificial way. And this, is go, this goes as follows. So remember that a scheme in particular is a locally ringed space, meaning that it is a ringed space with a uh, structure sheaf such that the stalks are local rings. And we want a morphism of locally ringed spaces to be two things. First, a continuous map of topological spaces from X to Y, that is straightforward. And second, a map of sheaves in the other direction compatible with F. So I need to explain what I mean by a map of sheaves and what I mean by compatible with F. So map of sheaves means that I simply have for each V a map from OY of V to OX of something. And by compatible with F, I mean that this should be the pre-image of V. But I also want this to be uh, compatible with restrictions. So I want F star V of the restriction of phi to V to be the same as the restriction of the pullback to W, the pullback on W of F inverse of V. And I want this for all U, uh, sorry, V in W in Y and phi in O, Y of W. And so this might look like a handful, but really this is just compatibility with restrictions. And I also require a th so a, a third thing, and that is that this is a map of sheaves of rings. So in particular, I want F star of V to be a ring homomorphism for any V. So I have a continuous map and a bunch of ring homomorphisms compatible with the restriction such that the pre-image of the maximal ideal in the stock at P is the maximal ideal 
in this talk at f of p. So the conditions one and two imply that I get an, uh, a ring homomorphism that I will call f star at p, maybe, from uh, the stalk O x, or sorry, O y f of p to O x p. And here I have a maximal ideal, and I want this to come from the uh, ideal, the maximal ideal at f of p. I want this compatibility with the local structure. So it should be a reasonably defined morphism between these ring spaces. So with this, we can now define the uh, morphisms of schemes simply by saying that a morphism between schemes is a morphism between their corresponding ring spaces. So that schemes form a category that is a full subcategory of the category of locally ringed spaces. Note also that by the preamble here, pre-varieties also formed such a category. Now let us look at affine schemes and then we can say something more. Namely, that we have a bijection between ring space morphisms from spec S to spec R and ring homomorphisms from R to S. And this is denoted by F goes to F star. So remember, now F here is a morphism of schemes. So F is by definition really a pair F and F star. And what I mean by the assignment F to F star is that if I have F from spec S to spec R, a morphism of schemes that happen to be affine, then uh, I look at the corresponding F star from O spec R of something to O spec S of something. And I take here the full uh, spec R and here spec S. But this is just R and this is just S. So F defines such a morphism F star from R to S. Conversely, given, say, phi from R to S, I want to define a morphism of schemes. And this is the case because if I take a closed set, so that is a set of the form V of J, the zero locus of some ideal J, and I look at F inverse of V of J. So by definition, this is the set of all prime ideals in spec S, such that phi inverse of P contains J, which is the same as all the prime ideals in spec S, such that P contains phi of j, but this is exactly v of phi of j. So pre-images of closed sets are closed, and so this is continuous. Then I need to somehow define a map of sheaves. And the way to do this is starting from this phi. So, so recall I had phi from r to s. And this is the case because if I take a closed set, so that is a set of the form V of J, the zero locus of some ideal J, 
and I look at f inverse of v of j. So by definition, this is the set of all prime ideals in spec S such that phi inverse of P contains J, which is the same as all the prime ideals in spec S such that P contains phi of J but this is exactly v of phi of j. So pre-images of closed sets are closed, and so this is continuous. Then I need to somehow define a map of sheaves. And the way to do this is starting from this phi. So, so recall I had phi from r to s. I can define phi P from the uh, ring R localized at phi inverse of P to the ring S localized at P for all P in the spectrum of S. And so this in turn defines for me a map from the uh, O spec R of U to O spec S of F inverse of U. How does this work? Well, what is an element in, in this thing? An element here is a family psi Q with Q in u and so then i map it for each q i map it with phi q so under phi q this maps to the phi q of psi q here and this gives me something here so uh, this definition on stocks is then by construction compatible with restrictions and gives me some uh, function here and so then I simply define this phi star of u in this way and this gives me the desired um, the desired function here and by construction and by the fact that this is a ring homomorphism of these uh, local rings I get the desired property that the pre-image of the maximal ideal is maximal and what needs to be checked that I leave out is that these two constructions are inverse to each other. They are mutually inverse. And in particular this means that now I have established the fact that ring space morphisms are uh, in bijection with ring homomorphisms. And so this means that the category of affine schemes is anti-equivalent to the category of unital commutative rings. So by the full, I mean, you have this assignment that you assign to R spec r and to a ring homomorphism phi you assign the construction in the previous slide and this gives you the fact that affine schemes are exactly the information that is contained in the rings comparing this with varieties remember that in the case of varieties the rings were the affine reduced k algebras but now we have enlarged our setting to include all unital commutative rings. There is one other point of view that I want to touch upon briefly, and that is the functor of points. So now that we had these functoriality statements, one might think about uh, embedding 
the category of schemes into some category of functors. If you thought that schemes defined in terms of prime ideals, that is kind of tricky, but you like functors, this is for you. So uh, if you have a scheme X, then you get a contravariant functor HX from schemes to set that maps a scheme T to the set of all scheme homomorphisms from T to X. So these are these F from T to X with F star from all X to all of T scheme morphisms. I mean, this is a general construction you can do for any category. And we denote this suggestively by x of t, so homomorphisms from t to x. Such a functor is called representable. So we say that the functor hx is representable by the scheme x, or rather that a functor is representable if it is of the form hx for some scheme x. The Yoneda lemma that is valid in a much more general setting tells you that morphisms from x to y correspond bijectively to natural transformations from hx to hy. How does this work? Well, if you have a morphism, so given f from x to y, you want a natural transformation, say alpha f from hom blank uh, x to hom blank y, but this is just composition. So if you have, let's say, for simplicity, take some object t, then you map here phi to f composed with phi. In the other direction, given alpha from hom blank x to hom blank y, well, if you take, this gives you in particular an, a map alpha x from hom xx to hom xy. And in HOM XX, you have the distinguished element, the identity of X. And so this maps to alpha X, the identity of X. And this is your map in HOM XY. So this is a map from X to Y. And you can check that these two constructions are mutually inverse. No schemes are needed. This is a, not, uh, an abstract um, statement. A fact from schemes is that hx, this functor, is determined by its restriction to affine schemes. So if you know hx of t for all affine schemes t, then this determines the whole functor. I will not prove this, but this basically comes from the idea that any scheme is glued together or has an open cover by affine schemes. And here is somehow the strength of this, um, th this construction. So I can actually determine my scheme x by looking at x of s. So why do I say determine my scheme? Well, because this allows me to um, put my category of schemes inside this category of functors. And since these morphisms correspond bijectively to natural transformations, then I have an equivalence of categories onto a subcategory of these functors. So, so if I understand these functors, then I understand my schemes. And this fact tells me that understanding these functors, uh, I in order to do that, I can only I, I only need to understand the parts x of t 
where t is the spectrum of some ring s and this is denoted x of s so x of the ring s so for example i can as we will see in uh, future lectures look at say the scheme x to be the set of all solutions to some polynomial equation so say x such that x squared equals 2 say and then I can look at x of z and this will be the set of integers such that z squared equals 2 which of course is empty but then I can look at x of say the rational numbers with this property again this is empty but I can look at x of the real numbers and I can look at x of the field mod say 2z and all the rings in between and this idea is the idea of Grothendieck that you look at all possible evaluations of the scheme x at various rings and this builds up your understanding of this scheme we will get back to that at a couple of occasions so for affine schemes uh, we get something further then we can just cut the middleman and instead of looking at schemes we look at rings because we showed in the previous slide that affine schemes contain the same information as rings so then reformulating this hx from schemes to sets gives me a functor from rings to sets a covariant functor now because i am uh, composing two contravariances that maps a ring s to x of s and x being spec r so x of s this is homomorphisms of schemes um, from spec s to spec r but by the previous slide this is exactly homomorphisms of rings so this is of rings from r to s and this is the point of view of the functor of points or the functor represented by a scheme it is less geometric more algebraic and very useful when you deal with for example group schemes or other kinds of affine schemes you do not need to like or fully uh, be into this um, notion or this point of view but you should be aware of its existence and perhaps you find it helpful